Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson. We're going to carry on today working on the Paper 2, which was the February-March 2015 uh, supplementary exam. And then if we finish it, I don't know if we will, but if we do, then we're going to start on the um, Grade it's the Gauteng prelim paper for 2015, but the paper one. Okay, so we're going to just keep going because we finished the whole curriculum. I'm basically just going to keep going through different exam papers and going through different exam paper questions. Okay, so we're looking at trigonometry, obviously, and this is obviously 3D trig. And it says in the figure points, okay, K, A, and F lie in the same horizontal plane. So what's very nice is that they've actually colored it in for you. If they hadn't been made this grayed out, I would have actually suggested to you that you guys actually do do that for yourselves. Just color it in very gently. Um, not that you can't see what you're doing all right over, but just so that you can tell of yourself that this is obviously the horizontal plane and then this year TA will be a vertical plane. So TA represents a vertical tower. There you go, TA. ATK. A T K A T K is X, okay. K A F is ninety plus X, and please note that that's on a different horizontal. It's a different plane. This is horizontal and this is vertical. So don't get confused by this being ninety plus X and that being X, okay? It just happens to be like that in a moment. And K F A equals two X, okay. Right, where X is somewhere between naught and 30, we don't know what it is. And they tell you that TK equals two units, two units. Now it says, express AK, AK, in terms of sine X. Okay, well that should be fairly easy to do. We know that this side here is two. We know that AK is the opposite side of X and this is the hypotenuse. So we can say sine x is equal to the opposite side, which is ak, over the hypotenuse, which is two. Therefore, we can say that ak equals two sine x. So therefore, this line here is two sine x. Okay, now the next question that says, calculate the numerical value of kf. They wanna know how long Oh, that's not going to help us at all. How long is this line here? And guys, they've been very nice to you because they've kind of given you a hint. They've said to you that this idea is 2 sine x. Okay. And now they want the numerical value. So obviously we need to work in this gray triangle here. And we've got this idea, which is 2 sine x. We have 2x over here, we've got 90 plus x over here, and we want kf, okay? So do you agree that we could actually work this out using the sine rule? We could say we can't, we don't necessarily know that any of these angles are 90 degrees, in fact, I don't, they definitely aren't. So we can either use the cos rule or sine rule, but the cos rule has two sides and an enclosed angle. So we're going to be using the sine rule and we want KF. So we're going to say KF over sine of 90 plus X, okay, equals AK, which happens to be two sine X, 2 sine x all over 2x. Okay, let's try that again. Over sine of 2x, sine of 2x. Okay, so side angle, side angle. Okay, so we're solving for kf. So kf is equal to 2 sine x multiplied by sine of 90 plus x all over sine 2x. Okay, but do you agree that sine of 90 plus x is the same as cos x? Okay, so this becomes 2, sorry, there's an x missing, sine x multiplied by cos x. Sine 2x becomes 2 sine x cos x. So kf is 1. So the whole of kf is 1 unit long. Okay, so that's quite a nice question, but they have helped you by giving you a hint by asking you to work out AK. 
Right, now we are getting onto geometry, it looks like, circle geometry. So it says, in the diagram below, O is the center of the circle, passes through, okay, part, the circle passes through ABC, they're on the circumference. BC is equal to AC, which is both 15. BO and OC are joined, which means, and since they're radii, these are equal, and we know that that's 10 as well. And they tell you that angle BOC is X. Okay, so do you agree that we've got a two, we've got two angles? I mean, we've got one angle and we've got three sides, and we want the size of X. So if we think about this, there is a rule that says, it's a cos rule that says that A squared equals b squared plus three c squared minus two b c cos a. So we're saying we could get that angle since we've got these three sides, okay? So do you agree that I could solve for cos a? I could say a squared minus b squared minus c squared divided by minus 2bc is going to give me cos a. So let's do that. a is obviously the angle, the side that's opposite the angle, and this is x, so that's 15. So it's 15 squared minus 10 squared minus 10 squared, all over negative 2 times b and c, which are these two sides, which is 10 times by 10, is equal to cos a. So let's now find that out on our calculator, work that out on our calculator. So that becomes 15, oh, let's try it again, special on, 15 squared minus 10 squared minus 10 squared equals divided by Sorry, just a second. It's 15 squared minus 10 squared minus 10 squared equals 25 over, that's 200. So therefore that becomes divided by 200, which becomes 1 eighth which is 0,125. So 0,125 is equal to cos A. So therefore we can say that A equals, I'm gonna go shift cos, um, shift cos of the answer, close the bracket, equals, 82.81 degrees. But remember that this was a negative. So let me show you what happens actually. Okay, right, hang on a minute. So if we put, sorry, let me show you. Okay, so we're gonna go shift cos of negative 0.125 close bracket equals 97.18, which is the correct answer. I don't know why it left the minus out, sorry. 97.18. So that is 97,18 degrees. So that answer there is 97,18 degrees. Okay, done. Now it says angle ACB. Okay, well, we know that the angle at the center is the same as the angle at, I mean, it's half the angle at circumference. So therefore we can find this angle here it is going to be 97.18 divided by two. Um, so let's do that. Divided by two is 48.59. So that's 48,59 degrees. Because AC is equal to BC, the whole of this is also equal to 48,59. So therefore, do you agree that we can find this angle by, and by basically adding these two and subtracting from 180 because the angles inside a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to do that. We're going to go 180 minus bracket 2 times 
48.59 close bracket equals SD 82.82. So the angle is 82.82 degrees. Now it says they want the area of triangle ABC. ABC. Okay, so the area rule is a half AB sine C. And if you look at this, we can see we've got a side and a side and an enclosed angle. So all we need to do is substitute those values in. So let's just erase, not all ink, let's just erase this bit here so that we can work it out. Okay, so if we do that, we've got area is equal to half times by this side, which is 15, multiplied by this side, which is 15, and then we've got sine, the size of this angle, which is 82,82. So if we then put this in our calculator, we get 0.5 times 15 times 15 times sine of 82.82 close bracket equals 111.62 so that is 111.62 and they don't tell us what the units are in so it would just be units squared please don't forget to write units so if they do tell you that it's centimeters or meters or whatever then it has to be centimeters squared or meters squared okay Right, another question. Hmm. It says in the diagram AB is a chord to the circle center O. M is a midpoint. Okay, so by the midpoint, we know that that's 90 degrees. Okay, right. Um, it says M is produced to P and OM is X units and AB, the whole from A to B, is 20 units. Okay, so therefore this is 10 and this is 10. And they tell you that PM to OM is 5 over 2. Okay, PM to OM is 5 over 2. Okay, so they want us to write down, write down the length of MB. Done, 10. Now it says give a reason why OM is perpendicular to AB. Well, because you've got a chord um, drop down to the midpoint, I mean, sorry, a line going from the center of the circle to midpoint of a chord perpendicularly bisects that chord. So it's basically just the rule, okay? Now it says show that OP is 3x over 2 units. Okay, so we know that PM, let's try again, PM over OM is equal to 5 over 2, right? So do you agree that I can say, but OM is X, okay, OM is X. Therefore, we can say that PM over X is equal to 5 over 2 X, okay. So the whole, I mean, it's 5 over 2, sorry. Therefore, PM is equal to 5 over 2X. So the whole of this is 5 over 2X. Therefore, OP is going to be 5 over 2X minus X, which is the same as 5 over 2X minus 2 over 2X, which is 3 over 2X. There you go. So therefore, OP is 3 over 2X. Finally, it says calculate the value of x. Okay, so if we know that that is 3 over 2x, okay, then we know that this is also 3 over 2x. I know they don't look equal, but they are because they're both radii. Okay, so therefore this is the same as that. So now we can look at our little right angle triangle. We've got this right angle triangle, which is why they said to you, why is this perpendicular? They were giving you a hint. Look at this. First, I asked you how big is that? Then they say, prove that, I mean, why is this 90 degrees? Hint, hint, hint. Then they say, find this value, yeah, hint. And then they say, calculate the value of x. They really are helping you through this question. So let us work this out. So now we're going to use Pythagoras. And Pythagoras says that x squared plus 
10 squared has to equal 3 over 2x all squared, okay? So if we had to work this out, it would become x squared plus 10 squared. 3 squared is 9 over 4x squared. Let's take all the x squares to one side and the numbers to the other side. So you've got x squared minus 9 over 4x squared is equal to 10 squared. Let's make it 100 just to get rid of it. Do you agree we can... There are two ways you can do this. You can think of this as over 4 and this being 4 over 4. Um, and you end up with a negative. What have I done wrong? We know that that's 3 of x over 2. That's 9 over 4. And that, that is the Pythagoras. That's x squared plus 10 squared equals 4 squared. I don't know. Let me think about this. x squared plus 10 squared is going to be 3 over 2. Yeah, because that is 3 over 2x, because OP is the same as OB. Okay, so x squared plus 10 squared is equal to 3 over 2x squared. Okay, right? We're happy with that. So therefore, x squared minus 9 over 4. You know what? Let's just do it the other way around, because I'm being an idiot. Um, yeah, I'm being an idiot. I'm being an idiot. Okay, because it's a minus 100, so I could have taken it across the other way. Sorry, I was being silly. So let me show you. We're going to take the x squared across here. So we get 100 is equal to 9 over 4x squared minus x squared. I forgot to put the minus in front of the 100 when I took it across. So you've got 100 is equal to, that's 9 over 4 minus 4 over 4, just 5 over 4x squared. So then what does that become? It becomes 400 divided by 5 is equal to x squared. 5 goes into 40. 8 times, and that's a 0, is equal to x squared. So therefore, x is going to be the square root of 80, and we just need a calculator. So we go square root, square root of 80 equals 4 root 5, 8.94 equals 8,94. And obviously, we don't worry about the negative value because of the fact that this is actually a positive length. X is a length, so we don't worry about the negative value of the square root. Right, nice question. Let's move on. Okay, so this is the last question of our paper two, and then we're gonna start, oh, it's the second last one. Okay, and then we're gonna start on paper one again. Okay, it says in the diagram below, the circle with center, okay, now first, before I carry on with this, I'd like to stress out that, stress to you, not stress out, stress to you that, in order to do circle geometry properly, you guys need to learn your theorems. You need to learn your theorems and make sure you understand how to use them, when to use them. And then, guys, it's just practice because the more circle geometry you do and Euclidean geometry you do, the more the easier it gets to find things, to work things out, to see through things. And the way that I do this is um, I read through this, and I'll show you how I do it. I read through this, and from the information they give me, I'll immediately start filling in things that I can find, okay? And then once I've found those, I will then look at the questions. And a lot of time, what you might find is that what you've filled in, you've already, you've already kind of solved part of the problems of what they've given you. So let's do this, okay? They tell you in the diagram below, O is the center of the circle, okay? So that means that this is a radius and that is a radius. So they're equal, okay? Those lines are equal. Pass it through A, B, C, and D. They tell you that A, B is parallel to so D, C, awesome, and that angle B, O, C is 110 degrees. Okay, if they parallel, it means that this angle here is equal to the whole of that angle there. And we've got alternate angles, so B1 is equal to D. Okay, it says the chords A, C, and B, D intersected E, and they're all joined. Okay, now it says calculate the size of angles given your answers, and the first one is D. Well, if you look here, O is the center of the circle, and if you take it down, you can see it is subtended by B and subtended by C. But if you take your fingers back up, you can see that D is also subtended by B and C. 
Therefore, this angle is half the angle of circumference, which is going to be 55 degrees. And it would be angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. That would be my reason. Now we want, so that's 55 degrees. And I would fill it in, guys, so that you know what you're doing. Now they want the size of angle A. Angle A. Okay, so now I'm looking at the fact that D is subtended by BC. A is also subtended by BC and in the same side. So therefore this is 55 degrees and you might, guys might know it as a butterfly theorem. There's your butterfly, okay. So that's 55 degrees, so it's also 55 degrees. I'm not writing butter, it's a butterfly theorem, you write angles subtended by same arc, same chord actually, or arc, it doesn't make a difference. And finally we want E2, we want this angle, yeah, hmm, that's an interesting one. So actually this is quite a nice question because they asked us different things. So they want this angle, yeah, E2. Okay, so we know that that is 55 degrees, we know that that's 55 degrees. Um, oh, okay. Do you agree that this angle B1 is equal to D because it's alternate? Okay, yeah, there is alternate side. And down there. So they're alternate. So if that means that they're alternate, this angle here is 55 degrees. This angle E2 is the exterior angle of this triangle, ABE. E2 is the exterior angle. What do we know about exterior angles? Exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So E2 equals 110 degrees. Okay, why? Exterior angle equals sum of two int opposite angles. Close brackets. Now it says prove, which is exactly what I was expecting. I'm going to just use a highlighter. Prove that B, E, O, C is a cyclic quad. And you know what? We've actually proved it already. And I'll tell you why. This angle here we've just proved is 110 degrees. And this is 110 degrees. But do you agree that both E is subtended by B, C? And O is subtended by BC. Therefore, this has to be a cyclic quad. So what we're saying is that angle B E C equals 110 degrees, and angle B O C equals 110 degrees. This is given. Okay. Sorry, no, this is proved above. And this is given. Okay. Therefore, therefore, we can say, no, wait, but BEC and BOC are both subtended by BC. Therefore, we can say that BEOC is a cyclic quad and why? because you've got equal angles subtended by the same board. Okay, right, let's do this last question on this paper. In the figure TRSW, hmm, TRSW is a cyclic quad. Okay, they didn't really have to tell us that. It's a circle and there's four points on it. Okay, it's a cyclic quad. But they do tell you that TW is equal to WS. Okay, so these are equal. Okay. RT and RS are produced to meet tangent W at V, W, and Z. Okay. PRQ is also a tangent to the circle at R, and R and W are joined, okay? R2 is 30 degrees, and R4 is 50 degrees. Okay, so it says give a reason why R3 is 30 degrees as well. 
Okay, well, the simple reason is because triangle RTW is congruent to triangle RSW. How do I know that? Well, I know that this line here is equal to this line given. I also know that this line here is common. And what else do I know? Cyclic quad. And opposite angles of the cyclic quad are supplementary, so that doesn't help. Just give a reason why R3 is equal. It has to be that these two triangles are congruent. In the figure TRSW is the cyclic quad, TW is equal to SW. RT and RS are produced to meet a tangent. VW and PRQ is a tangent at the circle and RW is joined. R2 is 30 degrees and R4 is 50. I'm going to have to think. We know that TW is equal to WS. We know that WR is... Oh, they're subtended by equal chords. This is 30 degrees. Okay, so we know, never mind congruency. Um, <clears throat> it's not to do with, normally when you do the butterfly theorem, it looks like this. Okay, so what we're saying is that that angle is equal to that angle because they're both subtended by these points. But you can have the situation where you have this triangle where that is equal to, for example, that bit there. Oh, that's a terrible drawing. Let's try again. We'll show you exactly this place. So you've got this here where this is equal to this. And because those two are equal in length, that angle has to equal that angle. There you go. So why is it? Because they are both subtended by equal chords. Okay, now it says state with reasons two other angles equal to 30 degrees. Okay, just give me half a second to erase something. I just need to erase this. It's messy. Okay, so we want two other angles equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so if that's the case, if these are 30 degrees, um, then wait what do we got that 60 and 50 is 100 no, okay that's not gonna work that's 80 and 80 okay right so 80 and 80 don't give me 160 180 okay so what do we want we want two other re with reasons two other angles that are equal to 30 degrees okay let's have a look at it this angle over here is going to be 50 degrees um, and 50 and 30 is 80 so therefore this angle here is going to be 100 which means this is 80 and 80 and 30 make 110 so therefore this is going to be well another way of doing this is this is 60 and this is going to have to be So if this is 80 degrees there, okay, so we've done S2 is 80 degrees and the reason for that is exterior angles are some of the two interior opposite angles. Exterior angle equals some, it just says state, two other angles are equal to 30 degrees. State, two other angles. Exterior angle is sum of two int opposite angles okay right next we've got v okay we'll worry about v in a second uh, we know that that's 30 degrees so that there none of these are exterior angles that's 80 because of that and this is going to be 100 because of that obviously and if this is 60, then this has to be 100 and 
20 minus 50 is 70. Okay. Sorry, excuse the sound. Okay. It says state with two other angles. Just state them with reasons. Two other angles equal to. Okay, wait, hang on. Um, okay. Then what do we get? We know that if that is 30, that there is six. Oh, that we can do that. This is 70 degrees. Um, Oh, I'm being an idiot. This is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees. I forgot this was a tangent. Because VWZ is a tangent, this angle here, SWZ, is 30 degrees. Because of the angle between the chord and the tangent, and similarly, it's called the tan chord theorem, and similarly, this is 30 degrees. So both uh, T. W and V equals 30 degrees, and so does angle ZWTS, ZWS equals 30 degrees, and they're both because of the tan chord theorem. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not on top of my game today. Okay, right. So if that's the case, then now I want to find the angle of V. Angle V, well, if that's 100 and that is 30, then this has to be angle, size has to be 50 degrees, and that's just angle sum of triangle. 50 degrees, angle sum of triangle. Now it says prove that WR squared is RV multiplied by RS. Okay, so when you see this, what we're looking at is ratio and proportion and what we're lo really looking at is similar triangles similar triangles so what they're saying is that wr squared let's just highlight what we're looking at we're looking at wr where is wr wr we're looking at wr we're looking at rv rv hang on let me get a different color no, that won't work. Oh, why is it doing this? <sighs> there we go. RV is the whole of this. And then they're looking at RS, which is this. So what they really want us to do is look at these two triangles, highlighter. We're looking at this big triangle here. Okay. And we are looking at this little triangle here. And we are proving that they are similar. And then we can look at those ratios. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about those two triangles. And if you look here, this in the yellow triangle, you've got 30, 50, and 100. And in this, we've got 30, 50, and 100. So we've actually proven it already. But we need to say it. Okay, so we say in the triangle RWV, RWV, and triangle, and you have to do it in the same order. So it's 30, what did I do? 30, 150, so I have to do the same order, RSW, RSW. Do you agree that we can say that angle R2 equals angle R3 proven above. Okay. Then we can say that angle V equals angle W2 proved above. Okay. Then we can say that angle S1 equals angle W, R, W, V, proved above. Therefore, triangle R, W, V is similar to triangle R, S, W. Okay. And if that's the case, you can say, therefore, I'm writing up here at the top, that R, W 
over RV, okay, RW over RV is going to equal, you have to do it in the same order, RS over RW, which means you got RW squared is equal to RS multiplied by RV. There we go. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, so we've got five more minutes. Let's start with paper two. So you have to change your, your gear that your brains are in and we're gonna get started with looking at these two questions. I mean, these couple of questions and it says, the first one says solve for X and says leave the answer in the simplest third form when it's three. So they do not want us to solve it. Okay, so this type of question, 2x plus 5, x squared minus 2 equals 0, is specifically given because a lot of students, it's actually an easy question, but a lot of students are kind of silly, and what they do is they multiply it out and then try and factorize, when in fact what they really should realize is what this thing's already been factorized for you, and you've actually got that 2x plus 5 equals 0, or x squared minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, 2x is equal to negative 5 over 2, or x squared is equal to 2, therefore x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2, or minus 5 over 2. There you go, question 1.1 done. Okay, now let's try this question. Okay, we've got x squared, I'm sure there's supposed to be an x here. You know what, I think that's a typo, it's just a silly question otherwise. So let's just erase all ink and do not do that, and let's do this one. We've got 12 to the 2x equals 8 multiplied by 36 to the x. Okay, so this is an interesting question, and what I'm going to suggest we do is we prime factorize both sides. Okay, so do you agree that 12, when we prime factorize it, it becomes 2 goes into 12 6 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 3 goes into 3 once. So do you agree this could be written as, yeah, as 2 squared multiplied by 3 all to the 2x is equal to 8 times, let's do 36. I just need to get rid of this because it's in the way. So let's carry on with the 36. I think there's a shorter way of doing this, but let's just do this. Um, 2 goes into 36 18 times. 2 goes into 18 9 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. And 3 goes into 3 once. So it becomes 2 squared times 3 squared to the x. Okay. So do you agree that becomes 2, 2 times 2 to the 4x? multiplied by 3 to the 2x is equal to 8 times by 2 to the 2x, 3 to the 2x. So do you agree we can cancel those already? Now we can divide both sides by 2 to the 2x to get rid of this on the one side and leave the numbers by itself. So you're left with 2 to the 2x is equal to 8, but 8 is 2 cubed. So you agree that 2 to the 2x is equal to 2 cubed. Since they've got common bases, we can drop it. So it becomes 2x is equal to 3, therefore x is equal to 3 over 2. It's a very nice question. Okay, grade 12, that's all for today. Tomorrow we will continue with going through paper one exam paper questions. Have a great day.